Howdy spacers, and welcome back to Blank Space Dolls. For this tutorial, I had the pleasure of taking part in a special collaboration hosted by Fatasia Customs on Instagram. But before we get into the inspiration for my woodland creature, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future projects. The ship is clear for takeoff, now let the magic begin. For this project, I decided to go with the fairy as my creature because I haven't had the opportunity to make one yet, using the Santander Poisonous Frog as inspiration because of its bright colors yet dangerous nature, horned nymph creatures, nocturnal forest creatures, and of course nature fairies in bright colors. With that being said, let's get straight into the tutorial. This time I decided to go with the Kirsty Trollson as my base doll because as stated before I did want to use a doll that had a brighter skin tone and I think Kirsty's magenta skin tone is perfect for this project. And you can see I've already removed the factory face using 100% acetone as well as the hair, sewn up the head, and marked where I'm going to place the horns. Next, we're going to start sculpting the horns using this Sculpey Primo polymer clay in 5109 opal, which has these nice iridescent sparkles to it. And then I'm just going to roll that out into a horn shape and then wrap it around my hot metal chopstick. And I'm going to do that for both sides and then you're going to place it into the oven to bake it. Here's what the horn will look like once it's been baked and you can see it does become a little bit more transparent than it did before it went into the oven. Once you have both horns baked, I'm just going to check for sizing on my actual doll head, making sure that it is the correct size in case I needed to remake either one of them, and it looks like they're going to fit perfectly. To prep the horns to be attached to the doll's head, I'm going to take my Dremel tool and drill a small hole into the center of the horns, and make sure that you wear a mask during this project because there will be a lot of dust flying around from the polymer clay. And then once those holes are drilled, I'm just going to insert these pins in here and attach them using epoxy glue. I'm going to fill each hole with epoxy glue, insert the pin, and then set those aside to dry. For the rerouting this time, I'm going to be going in with two different colors of Kanekalon hair, one being Fairy Tail from Retro Dolls US, and then the cream one that you'll recognize from my Winter Couture Custom. I'm going to mix those two colors together and begin the rerouting process, just looping the hair through my rerouting tool and inserting it into the head. Secure the rerouted hair using Fabri-Tac glue. And off camera, I did braid her hair into two separate braids and boil washed it. And then here you're going to see me once it's dry, I'm just letting the braids loose and it gives me a natural wavy texture. Then once you have both of those braids unraveled, you're just going to trim those straight ends, wrap the head up and give it an initial coat of Mr. Super Clear. And now we can finally begin the face up process. I start by using my Schminky Soft Pastel in the color Rose Matter to begin my initial blushing on the forehead, cheeks, nose, and chin. And here you can begin to see what a difference just blushing alone makes on the face. And then I'm going to go ahead and start with my Caran d'Ache Purple Violet to begin sketching out the eye shape that I want. I always try to use a pencil in a similar color to the skin tone that I'm using just so that way it doesn't contrast as much and it's easier to erase and fix if I do mess up or mark something that I don't really like. And of course, I'm going to go in with my General's Pastel Chalk Pencil in white, which you guys hear me talk about all the time. It is by far my favorite, and I highly recommend them if you're starting the customization process. So definitely check those out. And of course, I will leave a list of all of the materials I use in the description box below. Then I'm going to go in with another Caran d'Ache Pencil in cream to begin sketching out the eyebrow shape that I want. Although in the end I do end up thickening her eyebrows a little bit just because I thought if she was in the wilderness she wouldn't have perfectly sculpted eyebrows. And you'll see that in layer one that I've added the base colors and then in the second layer I just begin to build up those colors and deepen that eyeliner color. Before I begin to fill in the colored iris parts of her eye, starting with my Caran d'Ache watercolor pencil in yellow. I have to admit I'm actually quite obsessed with these Caran d'Ache pencils. I actually just started using them and I can say I'm very happy with them. I do also use Derwent watercolor pencils but I found that the Caran d'Ache are actually quite good and go on quite opaque as well. 
and then I'm just going to define the outer ring of that iris color using that same Karen Dosh color in purple and of course adding her beauty mark because there was like a darker spot in the mold of the actual doll's face so I went ahead and just made that a beauty mark and I think that it's really cute because I normally add beauty marks to my dolls anyways as a signature so yeah that's what I did and just a quick little tip, you do want to make sure that you're building up that white and the highlighted areas on your doll's face in every layer because you will get a better color payoff if you build it up in every single layer. I know that it seems kind of repetitive and like something you don't really need to do, but you'll see as you build up the layers of Mr. Super Clear that it does dull that color down a little bit. So you want to make sure that you do touch up all the highlighted areas in every single layer. Here she is after layer three of Mr. Super Clear. And here you'll see what she looks like after layer 4, and I went ahead and added the pupil in and began to feather that out. It's in these layers that I begin to go in with my highly pigmented Derwent watercolor pencils to begin to define and darken a lot of those colors. And you'll also notice here that I did go over her eyebrows with the lavender color or the light violet because I did want it to have an ombre effect from the cream that I added originally into the lavender. Then I do go in with my Derwent Ink Tints watercolor pencil in yellow as well just to start deepening that yellow color that I originally placed on there. Here she is after layer 5 of building those colors up. And the final touch of color is going to be this General Pastel Chalk Pencil in grass green just to add that darker gradient from the pupil part out to the yellow. And then I'm going to actually go ahead and go in in the same layer before I seal it and add the eye shines. And here she is once the eye shines are added and she's sealed a final time with the Mr. Super Clear. Of course, for some added shine, I did add these iridescent hexagon glitters to her face just to add a little bit extra dimension to her face up. And then I'm going to go in with my Liquitex High Gloss Varnish and gloss the eyes and the lips. Now to attach those iridescent horns to her head. As noted before, I did make these circular shapes and I'm just going to attach those using the two-part epoxy glue that I used earlier and prop her upside down to allow that to dry. And then I also used a little bit of epoxy sculpt to ensure that it's secured to her head and doesn't move around. Then I go in off camera and go ahead and style her hair using a combination of braiding techniques and then securing it at the bottom. It was fairly simple but I had to do it off camera because it took so much work. And then I'm just going to add some jump ring jewelry to her ears just for a little added detail. And of course my usual 3D lashes which I used these because they looked a little bit more cartoony and animated and slightly whimsical and I thought that it would add just a little bit of extra whimsy to my character. For those of you who are wondering, I do use Eileen's Turbo Tacky Glue to attach all of my false lashes to my customs. For the outfit this time, I'm actually going to be using quite different materials using these silk flowers that I actually picked up at Hobby Lobby. And I'm just going to begin to prep the materials by removing all of the leaves off of their original stems and separating them. So putting all the petals together, all the leaves together, and all the leftover branches, which I'm not going to use in this custom, but I may use in a future project. So it's always nice to keep all of that separated and organized. And here you'll see everything separated and I love that there's two different types of leaves that I can use and you'll see later in the outfit that I do utilize both of those. Now moving on to the crown. I've shown in a previous video which I'll leave in an iCard above how I make these circular shapes and then I just covered that in my iridescent fairy film and melted it down using my lighter so that way it was a snugger fit. And then I do take one of the types of leaves and cut out smaller leaf shapes to begin to cover that crown. This is what it looks like once you've cut all of those smaller leaf shapes and you'll notice that none of them are symmetrical or even because no leaf is exactly the same. And I'm also going to go in with these hexagon glitters like I used on her face to just detail the crown. Then I'm going to go in with my Fabri-Tac glue just to begin to attach those leaves onto the crown base. Here's what the crown looks like after everything's been added. 
Now moving on to the outfit, I was really excited to give these silk leaves a try as well as this jute string and this iridescent tulle fabric as a supporting underlayer for it. I did make this simple tube top off camera because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do a top under the leaves or not so I just made this simple top that ties in the back. For the skirt I'm going to take that tulle fabric and fold it in half but then also fold it in half again long ways before adding a seam down the back once it's folded in half once more. And then I will actually add a elastic string to the waistband to make sure that it fits. Once the skirt is made, I'm actually going to go in and cut that hem down and split it into four separate parts and layers. And then I'm going to just make the ends of the skirt a little bit more jagged by using a zigzag motion and cutting at odd angles to make sure that it looks a little bit more raw and uneven. Then I lay out the silk leaves in the order that I want them and kind of arrange them the way that they're going to lay on the skirt before taking this ribbon and just kind of measuring the circumference or the diameter of her waist and this is just a simple way to make sure that the length is the length that you want and I take that and add it to a thicker ribbon and then I begin pinning on the silken leaves in the areas that I want them trying to squeeze them all onto this tiny bit of ribbon. Then just sew across that top hemline there and I did use a white thread just because I wanted to make sure that I could still see the thread and it didn't blend in too much. For the top I just layered the two types of leaves that I had, one of the larger ones and one of the smaller ones to create this asymmetrical shaped top. Go ahead and sew along that as well to attach the top to the skirt portion of the dress and then I'm going to add some snap closures before putting those onto the doll. I have to admit that when I was putting on this tulle iridescent skirt with the top, I was kind of thinking to myself, huh, this would actually make another cute outfit. So you guys may see that come up in another video too, because I was like, oh, this is so much fun. But of course, because it's woodland themed, I had to keep the leaves, but moving on. For a little bit of continuity and to make sure that all of this made sense together, I did use those hexagon glitters on the top portion of her dress as well, just for some added detail and to make sure that everything kind of went together. I also created this little belt and this is actually going to be the back, so this is going to cover all the openings in the back side and it's going to wrap around and it'll cover all of that white thread that I talked about earlier. Now it's time for more embellishments. If you've been with me for a while, you'll know that I love my small finishings and just extra added small details that probably aren't even noticed or needed, but I just, I feel like my customs aren't complete unless they have a little bit more detail. So I do take these raw beads and super glue them to the bottom part of the belt. And you do have to kind of rotate and spin them to get them on there, but once they're secured, they're on there forever. And I just thought that this was an extra added detail and it also adds a little bit of weight to the belt so it doesn't just have these like strands that stick straight out. For the shoes this time I decided to create my own sandals by tracing around my mannequin doll's foot and cutting that out and that will become the template. And what you'll do is you'll trace it four times, two times with the way that it was originally cut out and then you'll flip the template upside down and trace out two more and that will give you the top and bottom for your left and your right shoe. So you'll end up with four pieces that look just like this and then you'll fabric those together to create two different soles. Then I'll go in using that same jute string that I used on the rest of the custom and separate those into four individual strands and then I'm just going to loop that through the actual sole of the shoe using a needle and then I'm going to tie a knot and glue that to the actual bottom sole of the sandal. Then I'm going to go back to my mannequin doll and kind of lay out the way that I want the sandals to lace up. And just note that I did use some of the Fabri-Tac glue to go over the strands of the string just because I wanted them to be a little bit cleaner and less frayed before finally attaching them to my actual custom and I did add a little bit of super glue to the knot at the back of the leg to ensure that it didn't slide down but this is what they looked like. 
Of course, no fairy would be complete without her wings, so for that I'm going to use my mannequin doll's body and lay it on my piece of paper and just kind of draw out the wing shape that I want. And I do end up making a bigger pair off camera, but I kind of wanted to show you the process that I use. And of course I'm going to use this 24 gauge gold beading wire to create the frame for it. And this is all one piece and I just use like a knotting method on the center to kind of secure it all together because I didn't want multiple pieces. And then I take this recycled fairy film and you're going to want two layers of it, one on the front and one on the back. And I used my flat iron and a paper towel to seal all those edges together and then I use a lighter just to finish those edges as well. Then to fuse those two together I use a two part epoxy sculpt and it looks a little bit raw here but I'm going to use my Dremel tool to clean that shape up a little bit. Then I'm going to take a remnant of that silk floral leaf I have from making the outfit and use that to cover up my epoxy sculpt and it's also going to just carry the theme through onto the wings. Of course, because I have no self-control, I'm going to create yet another accessory. Using this faux suede material, this spool of ribbon as my template to trace around and give me a perfect circular shape. The same jute rope to attach it to the belt and then a needle and thread to weave around the perimeter of it to create that drawstring detail. And then I'm going to stuff that off camera with some cotton and we can take a look at the final photos. Thank you for joining me in the making of Ashira, the Tree Fairy. Her magic comes from spring itself, and her power increases as the trees begin to sprout new leaves and grow in the spring sun. Tell me what you think of Ashira in the comments section below, and your favorite part of my customizing process, or things you want to see in future projects on my channel. I have more sweet and steampunk dollies coming soon, so be sure to follow me on Instagram for sneak peeks of what's to come. Thank you all so much for joining the Spacer family, where in my world, there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, Spacers, see you soon.